Everything okay with vowels and consonants so far? Don't know, haven't looked yet. <laughs> no questions? Today we have only one main goal, and that is to keep pushing ahead in Chapter 7. So how about if we pick up where we left off? We're on the last paragraph on page 169. Palatonasos occurs in okay. sex. What's the first word? Palatal. 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 It just didn't sound very clear. Palatal. Palatal nasals. And everybody remembers what palatal nasals are? Sometimes I say palatal, sometimes I say palatal. Everybody remembers what they are? Nya, nya. Palatal, remember, is the y sound. So if you put the y sound together with some other sound, it becomes a palatal sound, like li is a palatal what? Li. What's li? Palatal lateral approximant. Lia, right. And this is a palatal nasal. It's nye, nye. Go ahead. Palatal nasals occur in several languages. Several. Several. Okay, first of all, it's not sa, and second, it's only got two syllables. Everyone, several. Several. Good. Several languages. Several languages. Right. Languages. Languages. Good. Including French, Spanish, Italian, and many non. In Indo Indo European languages. Mm -hmm. Do in say Indo non Indo European languages again. Watch the N in Euro in European. Non Indo European languages. Right. What was I correcting here? I heard non Indo European languages. Can you hear? What's wrong? That N was not articulated. And that's really to do, be, really easy to do. You've got the habit from Chinese, Wang Yi, it's the same habit. So if you see a final N, make a special effort to pronounce it clearly no matter what comes next. Okay? Try saying French words such as. Agneau. Agneau, which is a lamb, and that's used in church. <laughs> the lamb of God. Everyone? Agneau. 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 Mm -hmm. And Spanish words such as señor. Mm -hmm. Everyone, señor. 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 Mm -hmm. It's not e, it's e, e. Señor. Mm -hmm. um, examples in Ital mm -hmm. Italian. Again. Examples in mm -hmm. of of Italian palatal nasals and laterals are on the CD. Okay. Are on the CD. Palatal stops are slightly less common than palatal nasals. Mm -hmm. They occur, occur, for example, in Hungarian. Mm -hmm. Stresses on the second syllable? Hungarian. Very good. Um, they occur for they occur. Can you link? Mm -hmm. They occur, for example, in Hungarian, not in 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 the in Hungarian, you can search for them on the CD, and they are a part of the and set. They are. It's the same kind of linking. Yeah. They occur. They are, and they are part of the set of CD. Uh, CD stops. Mm -hmm. Discuss discussed in the previous chapter and exam. Exemplify in table 6.2 and on. 6.2? In table 6.2 and on the CD. Because of the shape of the roof of Can the link? mouth. Can you link a little more smoothly? Because of the shape of the roof of the mouth? Everyone try that. Because of the When you're repeating, it doesn't sound like you're correcting anything. It just sounds like it's supposed to be. And I think, what did I want them to correct? What I wanted to be corrected was because of the shape of the roof of the mouth. Can you hear the difference? It sounds very choppy and it's not natural. It's not the way we usually speak or read. Because of the shape of the roof of, uh, roof of the mouth. Because of the shape of the roof of the mouth. Okay? Because of the shape. 
because of the shape of the roof of the mouth. Good. The contact between the t- contact between the front between like an e between mm-hmm. the contact between the front of the tongue and tongue not tongue tongue tongue, tongue. yeah tongue tongue the tongue but open your mouth more tongue tongue that's good. The front of the tongue and the hard palate, so often extends over a very <coughs> large area. Fairly, fairly uh-huh. large area. Uh-huh. As a result, the f- formation and release of a palatal stop is often not a rapid as not not as rapid as in the case of other stops. Other stops. Other stops. And they tend to and they tend to become Africans. Okay, good. In the case of other stops, it's because stress is on other because stops is repeated and other is contrastive, right? And here they're asking us to look at the CD, so let's do that. Italian, that's what I'm looking for. And we've do we have a we don't have a vial for Italian. But they're going to contrast a regular L with what kind of L? Palatalized, a palatalized L. So let's, here is there, naughty. Li, li, li. Pretty normal L, probably a bit dental. And here is a palatalized L which means to him. Li, li. Li, li. Can you hear that frication? Li. Li, li, li. Say yi. Yeah. Now put an L before it. Li, li, li. 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 That's what she's doing. Li, li. li. Okay, let's try another one. This one means crowd, and this is a regular L. Folla, 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 folla. And this one means leaf. Yes. Folia. Folia, 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 folia. That's the point. And uh, here's, I'll, I'll just give you the other examples here. This one means conceal in tongue. Vila, vila. Go. V, you didn't V. Listen. Vila, vila. And this one has a palatalized L. Vigliare, 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 Okay, and that one means keep watch, so ho. And then we've got a couple more here. We've got a regular N. The first one means names. The second one means, means gnomes, xiao ai ren. This one is names. No me. No me. And this one means shall I read gnomes. How do you spell gnomes? G N O M E S. Everybody listen and repeat. Okay. And the last one is grandfather and dream. This is grandfather. Nonno. 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 And this one is dream. Sonno. 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 Okay. So, those are examples of palatalized consonants in 
Italian. I think that's about all that he's got in this section. Um, so I think that's not very difficult. Just put a, what we write in IPA with J, the Y sound, together with a consonant, and you get a palatal, uh, a palatalized consonant, or palatal. He, he calls them just palatalized, or palatal, rather, palatal nasals. Okay, we're going to go on to the next section unless we have questions. Next. Number eight. Villa starps and nasals. Again, make it really clear and don't make any sounds that aren't there. First of all, it's V, it's not V, it's V. Villa stops and nasals k k mm, occur in English. But Can you link? In English. Occur in English. In English. In English. Right. But unlike other languages such as German, we no longer have filler fricatives. Watch your R's. We. We no longer Long longer uh -huh. have filler fricatives. 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 Good. They are not, however, hard to make. Pretty good. They are not, however, hard to listen. Let me finish. They are not, however, hard to make. They are not, however, hard to make. Mm -hmm. Starting from a syllable, from a syllable such as "ak," build a pressure. 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 Okay, it's not pressure. It's pressure. Pressure. Right. Everyone, watch that. A lot of people get that wrong. Pressure, and a lot of other words that have the sh sound or zh sound get mixed up, like leisure, leisure, xiaoxian. Leisure, leash, it's not leisure, leisure. Pressure, measure is je. Usually with two s's, it's sh, but not always. So pressure, and it has to be short because sh is voiceless. Build up. Build up pressure behind the villa closure. And then lower the tongue. Uh, don't be sloppy. And then. And then. Good. Lower the tongue slightly. Tongue. Tongue. Good, there we go. Slightly. The result will be a voiceless velar fricative, mm -hmm. which we write you don't as need who, just which is okay. Which which we write as h. Right. The symbol of the corresponding voiced sound. Voiced sound. Voiced sound mm -hmm. is h. Yeah. R. 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 As all, as with other fricatives. Not other. Other. As with other fricatives, 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 as, as with other fricatives, mm -hmm. learn to say. Okay, everybody, get ready. Voiceless, voiced. I'll do it for you once. Okay. Okay. Then produce sequences such as aha. E mm -hmm. o mm -hmm. uh Very good. That was nice. Everyone, go. Aha, e he, o ro, uh Right. Oh, and by the way, on our, um, they mentioned Hungarian for palatals. We will probably have a dictation on Hungarian on Wednesday, just to let you know. Okay? So, we've got an old place of articulation, because in English we have k, g, ng, but we have a new way, a new manner of articulation, but we've already discussed it before. It was mentioned in the tutorials, as I remember, and we've mentioned it in the class. So h is like the uh, ch sound in bach, but remember for ich, because of the i sound, it's palatal. How do we write the fricative in ich in German? I, what? What letter do we use? C, Sedil, right? Ich, as you remember, and ach. So more back vowel, we're going to use ch, ach, ich. And we've also got the voice version. Remember, it has to be long. It has it, long, it has to be elongated. X is the voiceless. This is the voice. 比较长的一个 gamma. 这是希腊文的 gamma. If you make it too short, it becomes a becomes a, look on the inside cover, the back inside cover of your book. That's right, a black close mid vowel, it's uh, uh. 
Yeah. If you make it too short, that's what it will look like. So make sure that you elongate it. And that's gamma r. Let's go on. Examples of words in other languages containing velar fricatives are Lakota. Watch the vowel in velar. It's not velar, velar. Velar mm -hmm. fricatives are Lakota. Mm -hmm. Lakota? Lakota, as shown in Table 6.1. German. One. one. Mm -hmm. German. Achtung. 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 Mm -hmm. Warning. Uh, Bach. Proper name. I don't know why they're using the a symbol, the mouzi. Because the more default vowel would be a. Ah. I believe it should be a. Ah. Bach. It's not bach. It's bach. It's my home in the. I, I don't know why that happened. I suppose I should ask, but he doesn't usually answer his email. Um, so bach and achtung should also be this. How chimen is your leads? What you're doing? Okay, Hamas, that's also back. Hamas, go ahead. Uh, Hamas, never. Uh, ojo, I. Mm -hmm. Pajo, mm -hmm. I pay. And Diga. 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 Mm -hmm. Pajo and Diga. Speak. Uh, the Spanish. H is often not very fricative and may be more accurately transcribed using the symbol for a voice velar approximant. Velar. Velar right. approximant, mm -hmm. which is. Upside down M with a long stem on the right. The part of the tongue involved in making velar sounds. Mm -hmm. Velar sounds. Right. The back of the tongue. The, not the. The. The, mm -hmm. the back of the tongue. Good. It's called the dorsum. Good. These sounds are referred to as dorsal sounds. Dorsal sounds. Dorsal sounds. We already know that from that discussion. Don't we already know that from that discussion on coronals? Way, way back? Can we just make sure that we're not imagining things or I'm not imagining things here? Where do we talk about coronals? Page 10, page 64. Which one do we want? Page 10. Right, page 10. Second to last paragraph, labial, coronal, dorsal. So this should not be new, if you remember. Dorsal, do in French means back. So just if you know French, that will be easy to remember. Dorsal is back. Okay. Next. Uvular sounds are made by raising the back of the tongue toward the uvula. Toward. Toward mm -hmm. the, the uvula. The, the uvula. Because, yeah. yeah, starts with you like university. The uvula. Mm -hmm. In a, in a, in a right. broader grouping, Bra, bra broader, broader mm -hmm. grouping of sounds. 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 They like, they, they like velar sounds. Velar sounds. Velar sounds can be called dorsal. <laughs> Good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's watch the continuation rises and other intonations in this sentence. Listen carefully, I'll do the whole sentence. This is more than our echo method can hold. In a broader grouping of sounds, they, like velar sounds, can be called dorsal. I'm going to read it again. Listen carefully, see if you can reproduce it more or less. In a broader grouping of sounds, they, like velar sounds, can be called dorsal. Try, everybody. Pretty good. Go on. They do not occur at they all. They do not. Remember, not is really important. They do not mm -hmm. occur at all in most forms of English. Mm -hmm. But in French, a, but in French, a voiced. But in French. But in French, right. a voiced uvular fricative. Upside down R pointing to the right. <laughs> Go ahead. Is the common, common form of R. In R. R, R in words such as rouge, rouge, rouge. Uh -huh. red, and rose. Rose. Uh -huh. Not red, red. Red. Right. 
more like an approximant. Mm -hmm. The voiceless uvular fricative. Voiceless. Voiceless right. uvular fricative. It's it's a elongated X. Mm -hmm. Also. Also. Also good. occurs in French. In. In French. Good. As in. As, as in. in Elephone of uh. after voiceless stops. After voiceless stops. After voiceless stops. Mm -hmm. As in let. Everyone let. 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 It's uvular. Let. Let. Uh -huh. Letter. French differs from English in that it often has perseverative assimilations in which for example in which for example in which for example the voicelessness of one sound continues on continues on continues on mm -hmm. through the following sound right and we mentioned that before that english tends to be tends to have anticipatory um corticulations or assimilation and french often has perseverative that means what comes after a sound will be influenced by the preceding sound. So for example, let t is voiced or voiceless. T is voiced or voiceless. T. It's voiceless, so the r at the end becomes voiceless as well. Let. Everyone let. Yeah. Okay, so there are three examples again. Rouge. 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 Rose. Rose. Let. Yeah. Okay? So are we okay? These are now uvular sounds. In, and these are what kinds of sounds? Manner of articulation that we've just learned for French. What's the manner of articulation? Fricatives. These are uvular fricatives, both voiced and voiceless. Okay. So remember these symbols will be tested on the symbols. Learn the symbols and the sounds that go with them. Okay. Now we're going on to stops. Uvular stops written Q and, Q and capital G. G and nasals written capital N good occurs as mm? uh, occur as idiosyncratic pronunciations in mm -hmm. English not pronunciations 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 mm -hmm. in English and as part of the regular sound systems of sound systems sound systems of once more sound systems sound systems good. of uh, Eskimo 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 a lute and other uh, Native American languages. American, you and American languages. Right. Table 7.3 illustrates contrasts between uvular, uh, uvular and velar stops and palatal alveolar affricates, uh, affricates in Quechua. Quechua, a, native, a native. Native, native American language widely spoken in Bolivia, Chile, and Peru. Good. Contrasts. Contrasts. Good. Uh, note that uh, Quechua has voiceless unasper unaspirated plosives, aspirated plosives, aspirated, asper uh, aspirated right. plosives, and ejectives. Okay, so they have Quechua here, and he's got the table there, so we can listen to them. The first one is palato alveolar. Listen. <clears throat> chaka. 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 Put in chaka, chaka, chaka. Okay, so try it again. Listen and repeat. Chaka. 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 What's that symbol under the T there? What is it? First describe it. What's it look like? It's a line. It's just a line and underline. And what does it mean? We need to go to the inside front cover. Retracted means it's further back. Right. Okay, so that means it's closer to the to the palate. And let's try let's just go through the list of palato alveolar. The next one, this one is voiceless or aspirated rather. Voiceless aspirated. Chaka. 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 
chakra. Chakra. Can you hear that there's more aspiration in this one? All right, and then the next one is horse, saya. Chakra. We've got what here? An adjective, yeah. Chakra. Good? Chakra. Chaka. 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 Aren't they fun? Okay. Then we'll go to the second column, the velars. Listen a couple times. Okay, this time repeat. Listen. Yeah, that one's kind of fun. Okay, this one's aspirated. And now we have an adjective coming. Get ready. <clears throat> Koyui. Koyui. It's hard. Okay, now we have what coming? Uvulars. <clears throat> A regular uh, voiceless uvular stop and then aspirated and then an adjective. So we haven't really practiced that yet. The back of your tongue touches your shell, so. Ah, ah, ah. Go really, really deep. The way I think, the easiest way to do it is just start around ka and then keep pushing your tongue back. Ka, 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 ka. You're going to hear it. You're going to hear it. 口水,这种弹回来的声音, then you know you've got it. <coughs> it's not just ah, uh, although it sometimes turns into that in Georgian. It's sometimes just ah, uh, but ka, 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 You can, I'm, I'm Making a trill now so you can hear where the place of articulation is. Uh, okay, we don't want to trill now, we just want to make a stop. Uh, 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 you're just saying ah, I'm not hearing the ah. It has a k sound except it's deeper. Ah, ah. What's the side home? Ah, ah, ah. You're saying ah, ah. You're going to have to kind of push it out. That'll push the uvula ahead. Ah. Okay, there you go. Now I hear it. Okay. Ah, ah. Just practice it. Go deeper with your K and practice. Ah. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, go deeper with a K. Start a K and then go deeper and deeper. Ka, 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 ka. You'll get there. It takes practice. Can you do it, Annie? Ka. Okay, you need to go deeper and it's not voiced, it's voiceless, unaspirated yet. Ka. You need to go deeper, okay? I, you're about there? Ka, ka, ka. You're getting down there. Twin, uh -huh. Then you'll get down to the uvula. <clears throat> but let's listen to this series for Quechua. Listen. Okay, we've got both a uvular stop and something else that we've just learned, which is a, it's an upside down capital Y. What is that? Lateral. Yeah, it's a palatal lateral approximate, palatal L, palatal lateral. 
So it's alio, 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 alio. Let's listen. Alio. Listen a few times. It's hard to do, but go home and practice it. Put it in your notes as an assignment. Practice all these sounds that we're learning, especially the uvular sounds. They take a little practice. Alio. 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 Try it anyway, everybody. Alio. Alio. All right, let's listen to the next one. This one's aspirated. Alio. 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 And then this one's ejective, uvular ejective. Same thing we have in Georgian. Let's listen a few more times. If you have time, use earphones and listen to them yourself. Stephen King. S-T-E-P-H-E-N, Stephen King. And you'll hear this really unusual, this re really unusual L. On the recording when I first discovered, discovered it, he says, he's lying, he's lying. Means he's lying, as I show Huang. He's lying. It was very clear. All right, so uvulars, we've are also gone on to nasals, though we didn't have an example just now. Let's go on to the next, okay? Go ahead, Nishan. All right, next paragraph. One way of learning to produce uvular sounds is to start from a voiceless fricative h. While making this sound, slide your tongue slightly fur uh, farther back in the mouth so that it is close to uvular. The result will be the voiceless uvular fricative h. Uvular. Uvular fricative h. Uh, h. 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 Mm -hmm. Learn to make these sounds before and after vowels in sequence such as aha, oho, uhu. Let's try those, everyone. Aha, oho, uhu, uh, Okay. You'll find it easier to use back vowels at first, then go on to sequence such as ehe, ihi. Let's try those. Those are harder because you have to make the vowel in front, and the fricative is way in back. Ehe. Okay. Next, add voice to this. Add voice to this sound. Add voice to this sound. Mm -hmm. Saying. Okay, let's try that. Everyone, go. Okay. Practice saying. Uh -huh. before and after vowels. Try saying the French words cited in the first paragraph of this section 9. We are, we've already nine. done that. Okay. okay. Let's go on to our next reader. All right. We're going to move on now after this next paragraph into pharyngeals and epiglottals. And these are difficult. I'm not good at these. So I will tell you about them. And I will find examples online. Okay. I actually found an expert on these at a phonetics conference in Hong Kong, summer before last. And he wrote me a nice letter about them and gave me recordings. But I don't think I really, uh, I haven't mastered them myself. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Once you have mastered the pronunciation of uvular fricatives, try changing them into uve uvular stops. Say, ah, ha, eh, eh, Then make a stop at the same place of Place of articulation, say saying a uh, ah. a ka. Okay, everybody, starting from the voiceless, aha, then aga, and then a ka, a ka. So voiceless fricative, aha, voiced, aga. Voiceless stop, uvular stop, a ka, and voice uvular stop, a ga, a ga, a ga. And then the voice you of your nasal, ah, 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 ah. You gotta hear that. You didn't close the no tongue, 
弹回来的声音。Okay, um, why don't you read it anyway, even though we've covered it? Now produce a voice. Now produce. Now produce a voiced uvular stop. A voiced uvular stop. A voiced uvular stop. Ah ga, ah ga. Mhm. And the uvular nasal. Ah ga. Practice all. Practice all. Practice right. all these sounds before and after. Please be on my job. Practice all these sounds. Practice practice all these sounds. Not this. Once more, these. Once more. These. Practice all these sounds. Practice all these sounds. Good. Before and after before, different. Before. Pause. Be on my clock. Before and and after different vowels. Very good. All right. Why don't you take a little bit of the next paragraph up to nasal because that's long.、Uh, number ten and eleven.、Uh, the gestures for pharyngeal and epiglottal sounds involve pulling the root of the tongue or the epiglottis back toward the back wall of the pharynx.、Uh, many people cannot make a stop gesture at this position. Furthermore, it would be literally impossible to make a pharyngeal or epiglottal nasal. <laughs> Because, go ahead. Oh, make have another、uh, read another sentence. Closure that deep in the vocal tract would prevent it, the airstream from coming through the nose. All right. Let's look first of all where the arrows are for ten and eleven. Go back to that figure. Look at the arrows for ten and eleven. It's on page one sixty-four. Can you see how deep pharyngeals and epiglottals are? And if you're closing off the airstream at those points, can we make nasals? No, it's too deep. So that will probably be in some some test question. There is a there's a contradiction here. There's a chongtu here that we can't solve. So we can't have epiglottal nasals. And and it says. <clears throat> Um, many people cannot make a stop gesture at this position. They tend to get affricated. They become fricatives or affricates, and no nasals. So that's pharyngeal epiglottal. Let's read more about them before I play the examples next. But pharyngeal fricatives shown by the symbols. Oh, and, oh. Okay, they go down like chi chuan to hold the singing. Uh, yeah, can be made, and they do in fact occur in some. And they do in fact occur. And they do in fact occur in Semitic languages. Semitic, everyone. That's a good word to know. Semitic is a family of languages. It includes Hebrew, Arabic, the Chadic languages of Africa. There are many other languages in that family, but the most famous members are Hebrew and Arabic. The Berber languages of Morocco, I believe, are there too. <clears throat> and they do, in fact, occur in Semitic languages such as Arabic, such as such as Arab、ah, Arabic. Yeah, please, everybody, remember that. What happens with Arabic dancing? It should be people meant to say aerobic, so they often mix these up. And if you put the stress in the wrong place, Arabic will sound like aerobic. So Arabic, Arabic, and the language is called Arabic. And it's and, but the people are called Arabs. Arabs, so then me, call Arabs. Oh, 语言叫 Arabic, and Arabic numerals, Arabic alphabet, etc. Okay. Arabic and Hebrew. The Arabic word word for bath is hammam. Pretty good, pretty good try. Okay, let's just find them in the table. Inside back cover. You'll see under pharyngeal, fricatives, voiceless. It's got the H with a bar through the stem, and then we have a backwards glottal stop. That's、um, that is the that is the voiced version. So ha and ha, and it's got a meo 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 e tia xian. So ha and ha, 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 and you will hear people who speak Arabic. Not all dialects have those actually. Sometimes they're uvular, they're higher. 
But if they have them, you will often hear them making these sounds. Oh, you know, you'll hear these really deep sounds. Start paying attention to Arab speakers speaking both their native language and a language like English, and you'll hear the sounds. Okay? So, hamam, hamam. Okay, Mom. go ahead. For, and? for uncle, hum. Hum, hum, hum. This one's voiced. Hum. Mm hmm. The articulation varies. Once more, the arti articulation right? varies consider considerably in the Semitic languages. Some speakers using epiglottal and others pharyngeal gestures. Mm -hmm. These sounds also vary. These, these mm -hmm. sounds also vary considerably. Also, uh, also Good. vary very considerably with regard to the degree of constriction. For many speakers, there is little or no actual friction, so that approximants rather than frictives are produced. All right, so we don't necessarily get a tie-in, we may get a jing in and it sounds a bit shun-chang. The voice frictive made in this region usually have, has a great deal of, of laryngealization, creaky voice, perhaps because the necessary constriction in the pharynx also causes a constriction in the larynx. So, you're going to have probably creakiness. So you also get creakiness in there, okay? Neither Hebrew, Arabic, nor any of the other Semitic Semitic languages distinguish between pharyngeal and epiglottal fricatives, but some of the languages of the Caucasus 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 Caucasus, Caucasus contrast these two possibilities. Mm -hmm. The CD has a recording of Agul Agul, which contrasts voiceless pharyngeal h, 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 and epiglottal. Frictives. Right, okay, so I'm not going to try to bow in these. I tried to learn them at the conference. Um, this friend who taught me about them, I think his name was Scott, um, he said that you will sometimes hear epiglottal trills in jazz singing, like by Louis Armstrong. You hear this growling, oh, oh, eh. This kind of a sound is actually epiglottal. I'm sorry I don't do it well. I don't know if I can find it. I'll try to find examples online during, uh, during the break. But we have a ghoul here or not. I wish they put more of the tables in the text because you have to open the CD to get it or go online. So just listen. This is a voiced pharyngeal fricative. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 Okay, how about if I get some of these examples ready? I'll try to during break and we'll listen to them after break. So take a break. All right, so we're going to listen again to these sam uh, samples from Agul. It says it's a Naho Dagestanian language. Dagestan is a part of the Caucasus. It's not related to Georgian, by the way. And then you can see the symbols, I think, pretty clearly. I'll make it a little bigger on the screen so you know what we're getting. And here again, you can see this is going to be a what? What is this symbol for? This one? It's a voiced pharyngeal. And they usually do not, it's written right here. They often don't, often don't distinguish between pharyngeal and epiglottal, but you'll see what they have here. So let's listen to this. That's this one. All right, let's just listen to them, and then here is the plural. Okay, that's the growl sound that I was talking about. You sometimes hear in Louis Armstrong singing. Oh, it's down there. Uh huh. And let's listen to the voiceless pharyngeal fricative. Mm. 
Voiceless. And here's the voiceless epiglottal fricative. Meh. 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 Okay, plural. Actually, way should be non countable in English. Meh. Meh. And you should be able to feel that tension in your throat. Mm -hmm. Voiceless epiglottal stop. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Girl. <clears throat> Okay, and measure. Sick, sick, sick. Girl. Sick, 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 sick. Okay, so at least you should have a feel for them. Okay, I'm not good at these, so I can only play examples for you. Um, it's hard to hear them really clearly with just the audio file, especially without earphones, and they just sound like some random sound deep in your throat. But these have been studied, so you can be confident of them. And actually, right now, because it uh, reminds me of some of the field work that Peter Latifoga did, I'm going to do a very quick book sharing. Other books by Peter Latifoga, I collect them. I don't think I have every single one of them, but I have quite a few of them. This was, it may have been the last book that he read before he passed away, uh, wrote, that he wrote before he passed away. Phonetic Data Analysis, an Introduction to Field Work and Instrumental Techniques. So if you want to do actual field work, collecting data, getting recordings from native speakers of unusual languages, and then analyzing the data, transcribing it, and so forth, he teaches you a lot of really interesting methods, how to actually do them like that charcoal method that I described in class. You use olive oil and charcoal powder, and then you use a mirror to take a picture of what, where the charcoal powder has been uh, licked off or just uh, removed by contact with the tongue. So this is a really great book. There are a lot of things that are repeated. It's sort of like vowels and consonants, but it's specifically about how to analyze data when you're doing field work, okay? So that's phonetic data analysis. I think it was the last book he wrote, I'm not sure. This one is much earlier. You can see it's a used book, kind of old. This one Peter Latifoga co-wrote with Ruth Glick and Clive Kuyper. It's about language in Uganda. Their main language that I'm familiar with is Luganda, but they have languages that are both Bantu and non-Bantu languages. And there's a lot of really interesting things. I haven't read it. I've just sort of browsed through it. And right now I happen to be really interested in Africa because I now have a Facebook friend in Zimbabwe. And it's just got a lot of interesting stuff. So another Latifoged book, one that he co-wrote. <clears throat> okay, so that was pharyngeals and epiglottals. And yeah. are, are they really, um, pronounced with breathy voice? Are they pronounced with breathy voice? We don't describe them that way. Uh. You get that feeling because of the uh sounds, the tension. And there's also tension in breathy voice. Um, baha, baha. What is the difference? Baha, baha. I will have to think about that some more to give you a better answer. Give me some time to think about it. But they do have that sound about them. It's because of the tension. It's because of the tension. Okay. Mm. Okay, let's keep reading. Next. At the first stage. Mm, again. Mm. At, at the, at uh, first yeah. stage, at a first stage. At a, at a, mm -hmm. at the first stage in learning phonetics. 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 It is sufficient to be able to produce either pharyngeal or epiglot, epiglottal fricatives. 
if you try to constrict your bearings as much as possible, you will probably be do be doing so by be doing so be doing so by retracting the epiglottis. The epiglottis. Can you understand what he's describing here? Constrict is 把它那个缩紧，把它弄得很紧。To constrict, 缩紧 your pharynx, 你的那个咽壁 as much as possible. 如果是已经很尽量把它那缩得很紧 you will probably do this by retracting your epiglottis. 你的会咽会往内缩，会往后翻，来达到这个 pharynx the constriction is what they're saying. Keep going. Try to produce the voiceless sound. Now, if now if you can produce this sound, okay. <sighs> make it deep and make it very constricted. 那个咽咽壁要很紧。Okay. Now, if you can produce this sound. Before a vowel. Now, if you can. Now, if you can. You're reading really well, but I think you need to put more tonic stresses in to bring your pitch up higher. I know it's a little harder when you have a cold or you have allergies. So now, that's a tonic. If you can, that's another tonic. Produce this sound. Continuation rise. Before a vowel. That's our last tonic. Okay. So we use a. Ah, so let's try to use that pharyngeal fricative. Before a、uh, voiceless pharyngeal fricative before an ah, everyone, ha, 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 make it just really jing, ha, 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 ha. Okay, try, ha, ha. All right, go on. Now next, try next. Next.、Mm -hmm. Remember the little song. Next. Next.、Mm -hmm. Next. Try to make the voice sound. The voice sound. The voice sound. Uh huh. Not worrying if it turns out to a. It turns out to have creaky voice. Creaky voice.、Mm -hmm. Creaky voice. Produce these sounds in the Arabic words cited above. All right. Let's go back to bath with the voiceless pharyngeal fricative. Bath in the middle of the previous paragraph. Everybody. Hamam, hamam, and then uncle, ham, ham. Okay, not that I'm going to be Belgian, but this is giving you a 大意 And、uh, you're you're noticing these videos that I put up from the University of Victoria, and this is where that friend that I mentioned, Scott, <coughs> goes to school. He's doing his PhD there, I believe. And you can see them larger. Here we have an intervocalic stop sequence of. Let's see what it says. The initial stop is glottal, and the second stop is pharyngeal. That is, the first involves the vocal folds and ventricular folds in the stricture, while the second involves the area epiglottic fold constriction to achieve full closure of the supraglottal mechanism against the base of the epiglottis. It sounds kind of fuzzy, but if you read it yourself, it's not a big deal. Let's see if we can get the sound to play. E E E E E E E E E E E E. All right, and that's this one. E E E, and he's using his epiglottis, epiglottis there. So, look at it, see what's happening. Okay. See the contact there. All right, let's look at this one. This one is an intervocalic voiceless pharyngeal trill. Hey. Yeah, that's a nice、um, graphic one. Hey. 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 Okay. It's an intervocalic voiceless pharyngeal trill. And this one is a voiced pharyngeal trill. There we go. That one's fun. That's the kind of growling I think that I was talking about. 
You may have heard that in some jazz singing, they use a growl sound, sort of like that. I'm not going to try it, but you can work on it. Maybe I'll work on it some more myself. Okay? So, this is University of Victoria is one of the few places where you can get a lot of information on pharyngeal and epiglottal sounds. Okay? Yes? Ah, uh, okay, yeah, because we're not used to the articulations. I think once you get used to them, they become more normal and you won't feel like throwing up. There's a lot of things that sound like throwing up in phonetics. Even, even when I'm uh, showing people a final stop, like bag, bag, I sound like I'm about to throw up. You really feel like throwing up. I would avoid it then. This is not the time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. So be careful with it. There's, there are t articulations that we're not used to, and your body may not like what you're trying to do. Let's keep going. Before finishing this section on gestures at different places of articulation, we must note that some sounds involve some the sounds. Some sounds involve the simultaneous use of two gestures. Two just ge two gestures. Two gestures. Mm -hmm. The English approximant 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 good. Ooh, well, mm -hmm. well, was both an approximation was was huh? has mm -hmm. both an approximation of Let's the say it again approximation you're missing a k approximation of the lips making it a bi bilabial sound a bilabial sound bilabial sound mm -hmm. and of the back of the tongue and the soft palate making and the but and the, not and the, it's and the and the good. soft pad soft, soft mm -hmm. palate making it a velar sound good sounds that involve these two gestures are called are not a, are, are mm -hmm. called labial velars or in some more old fashion in some more old fashioned books. Mm -hmm. What are we gonna stress? Old fashioned nope. in some usually compound adjectives with hyphens. In in these adjectives we often have every syllable stressed. So in or in some more old fashioned books, because this is a book and we're talking about things that books include. And here, old fashion is the new information. And the tonic stress is on fashion. Old is also stressed. Old fashioned, old fashioned books. Old fashioned books. Good. Labial velars. All right. We've had this. We had it first semester because it's an English sound. It, uh, the sound w has a double articulation. We, it's both what and what? Both labial and velar. So everybody say w. W. Feel, feel what you're doing. W. You can feel and see your lip rounding, or you can see it on other people. And then feel the back of your tongue rising and getting tense. So, W. W. We. We. Say it a few times so you can really feel it. The back of your tongue is rising and becoming tense. Your lips are becoming rounded and tense. So try saying we a few times, feeling what you're doing. Go ahead. Okay, that's covering, that covers W now. We're going to go into other double articulations in African languages next. Keep, keep reading. Yoruba, Eve, Eve mm -hmm. Tiv, and many other languages spoken in West Africa have label velar stops. Some of the languages spoken in this area also have label velar nasals. As in the case of nasal and voice clicks, we can symbolize two co-occurring articulations with a tie bar joining two symbols. The Yoruba for arm is akpa, and for adult is akpa. Akpa. 
You need to make them at the same time. That's the thing about double articulations. In okay. these words, the two closures occur almost simultaneously. One of the best ways to learn learning to say these words is to start by making a labial click. A what? By labial click,、mm -hmm. a kissing sound, but with the lips being simply compressed and not puckered. Okay. Between, between vowels. vowels. Say, ah.、Uh, Kiss, ah,、uh, at first、uh, slowly, and then as fast as you can. Then weaken the suction component. The of suction component. The suction component of the kiss, so that of the you kiss of the kiss,、mm -hmm. so that you are making little more than a labial velar articulation between vowels. The result should be a labial velar stop, much as in the Yoruba word, akpa.、Uh. Akpa, akpa. Make the K and the B at the same time. Akpa,、mm -hmm. arm, arm. More information about Yoruba labial velars can be found on the CD by using the language index. By using the what? Language index. Language index. That's better. <laughs> okay. What do we want to do here? First of all, we want to make an ah sound and then a bilabial click and then ah again. So ah 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 ah. Okay. So first slowly and then as fast as you can. Ah 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 ah. Then weaken the suction component of the kiss so you're not sucking air in so much. So you're just mainly doing a labial velar articulation between the vowels. So labial, it's like a w in the back. So w ah ah. And then you've got a K coming out because you're making a W, English W. Your tongue is going to be in the right place. You can do B and K at the same time. Okay, that's mainly how it works.、Mm. Let's continue. This is a convenient place to review all the places of articulation we have discussed so far. So far. So far.、Mm -hmm. Table seven point four four is a consonant chart showing the symbols for all the nasals, stops, and fricatives that have been mentioned, except for the epiglottal consonants. Check that you know the values of. All these symbols. Remember that you can hear Peter Ladfogus pronounce it. Peter Ladfogus. Peter Ladfogus. Ladfogus. Ladfogus.、Mm -hmm. Pronunciation of them on the CD by clicking on the IPA chart. Okay. So we're going to review now. We're going to go through all kinds of things. <clears throat> And next reader. Um, types of articul articulatory gestures.、Good. Stops. We can begin our consideration of the different manners of articulatory gestures that occur in the languages of the world by reviewing what has been said already about stop consonants. Okay, beautiful phrasing. You could have paused before about, but your phrasing is very, very good now. What has been said already about stop consonants? What has been said already?、Uh, al already. About stop consonants. About. About stop consonants. About. About. About is okay. Stop consonants. <laughs> okay, by reviewing what has been said already about stop consonants. By reviewing what has been said about、uh, said already about、uh, about stop consonants. About. About stop, stop consonants. consonants. Now you got it. Table seven point five illustrates a number of different types of stops, most of which have been discussed earlier in this book. The first seven possibilities were discussed in chapter six. Make sure you understand make all. Make sure.、Uh, make sure you understand all these terms and know what all these stops sound like, even if you cannot make them all yourself.、Mm -hmm. Even. Even. Yeah, not even. 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 And also, say understand again. Understand. Now it's fine. It sounds like you have a little understand. Does your friend say that? No. Okay, because it's getting popular in American English now. So that's what I thought. That's where I thought it came from. 
I keep hearing it on the internet, and I always 吓一跳。哇，又是一个人说的。Yeah, S T is turning into S T. I told you in another class that Michelle Michelle Obama has this pronunciation, and it always makes me kind of. 有有点吓一跳 I'm just not used to it. Like street instead of street, street. Understand? It's getting really, really common. It probably will change completely someday. I don't know, but just like you're not so sure about how le right for how le, I'm not really crazy about street for street. But it happened in German because the, they have the same origin. In German, street is sta Straße, so st in German is st. As one of my friends pointed out, English is just getting to it a bit later than German. Okay, um, so um, let's go through the first、uh, rows and table seven point five. Well, before that, let's go to seven point four. It says it's a consonant chart for the symbols, all the nasal stops and fricatives that we've mentioned so far, except for the epiglottal consonants. So let's look at seven point four first, and let's make sure that we recognize all of them. And we know that this and know the sounds associated or the sound associated with each one. So starting with bilabial nasal, just make the sound by itself. Everybody go. Hmm. Mm, good. Voiceless stop. Okay. Voiced. B. All right. Voiceless fricative bilabial. Okay. Let's put an I after it. I guess it's easier. Fa. Fa. fa, all right. No fa. Don't don't touch. Don't use your teeth at all. So fa. fa. Let's make it voiced. Va. Va. Good. Okay. Labio dental nasal. Na. 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 Labio dental. Na. 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 No stops because we can't do that with teeth. They're too leaky. And then fricative. Those are easy. Voiceless. Fa, fa. and voiced. Va, good. Next is dental with a、ah, nasal, na, na, good, and voiceless stop, da, da, and voiced, da, da, good. Fricative voiceless, fa, voiced, da, good. Alveolar nasal with a,、ah, na, good. Stop, voiceless, da, da, and voiced, da, good. Fricative, sa, voiced, za, good. Okay, retroflex nasal, na, 卷起来 na, 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 good.、Uh, retroflex voiceless stop, ta, 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 voiced, da, da. Okay, retroflex voiceless fricative, sa. Ra and voice, ra, ra, good. Palato alveolar, like we have in English with a, voiceless, sha, and voice, ra, good. Palato plus a, nasal, nya, nya, nya. All right. We didn't practice the palatal stops a lot, so let me say it and then you repeat after me. First of all, the voiceless with a, ya. Remember, it's like. Think of in Chinese in in Minayu, chai. Say chai in Minayu. Yeah. Tia, right? Yeah. So make it a little faster so the y is more incorporated into the t sound. Tia. 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 Don't make it kia. No k sound at all. It's like t y a. Tia. Tia. Voice. Yeah. 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 All right. Onto the fricatives. A voiceless palatal fricative, yeah, yeah, and voiced, yeah, yeah, good. Velar nasal plus a, nga, nga, good. Velar a voiceless velar stop plus a, ga, ga, and voiced, ga, ga. All right, fricative voiceless, ha, ha, voiced, ga. Ra, good. Uvular nasal plus a, ma, 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 ma. You can hear that sign of kind of tapping sound. And then the voiceless uvular stop plus a, ga, ga, ga. Voice ga, ga, 
Ra. Ra. All right, voiceless, uvular fricative. Ha. 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 Voice, ra. 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 Pharyngealized plus ah, voiceless. Ha. Ha. Voice, ha. Ha. Okay, and then we've got the double articulations, nasal, velar plus bilabial. Ma. 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 You know, sometimes when you guys make a double articulation is when I'm trying to get you to say in, in, but I still hear ing. And who is saying, I'm trying, trying really hard, but I'm frustrated? Was that you, Bella? That I'm trying hard to make an un sound and I'm still being corrected for saying ing? Didn't you tell me that your partner told me? Was that you or is that somebody else? Okay, so for example, when people are trying to make the, articul uh, the, the alveolar nasal and they say in, in, but I hear ing, ing. Very often they're making a double articulation. It's un plus un, ing, ing, ing. You've got your tongue tip on your alveolar ridge, but you've also got the back of your tongue on your soft palate. So it's ing, ing, ing. and I hear both. And I go, no, no, it's not right. And then I can see their tongue tip is in the right place. You're making a double articulation because the default, I think, in Taiwan English is velar. So it's so easy to say an ing, but it's not everybody. Because yesterday I went to Taichung. Okay, last time it was Kaohsiung, right? Yesterday was Taichung. Next time, next two times will be Taipei, so no big deal. Taichung is at least a little exotic. There was one student who constantly pronounced for W-I-N, win. She constantly said wing. Wing, Lulu, that's you, okay? Wing for win, win, and she just couldn't switch it. There was a student who got it right away. Win, I go, that's right, can you teach Lulu? So win, 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 they were trying. And then I said, all right, the next one we're gonna practice is wing, and Lulu said wing, that's great, Lulu had it. But the one who was teaching Lulu win, said win, win. <laughs> so one was great at win, one was great at wing, and they couldn't do the other one. It took a lot of practice, eventually I think they both got it, but it took a lot of practice. But a lot of people, when they're trying to say win, they're also producing a velar nasal. Wing, wing, wing. That's a double articulation. Okay? So here we've got it not with alveolar and velar, but with bilabial and velar. So try mung, mung, ma, 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 ma. Okay. Next one is the voiceless stop. We've got a velar and bilabial. Ba, ba, ga, ga, ga. Okay, I'm not necessarily good at them. This is the best I can do. Voice, ba, 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 ba. That's not so bad. Ba, ba. Okay, we've gotten through 7.4. Time to go on to 7.5. Question? We do. They often don't in the book, but we do in this class because I told you to. <laughs> Just because we often need the dental for Mandarin, the thun are mostly dental, and we need th and the to be interdental to keep them straight. So please, yes, add interdental <clears throat> or make it a separate category. I think that's better. Because for na and tha and da, our tongue is not sticking out. For tha and da, it is. That was a good question. Let's go to table 7.5. First row one, and we'll use their examples here. Let's see if we can produce them, even though they're in exotic languages. One is a voiced bilabial stop, and the example is from Cindy. Everybody try it. Banu, banu. Everybody remembers that? I bet you have that echo in your head. We played it many times. Banu, banu. All right, voiceless unaspirated. Banu, banu. Voiceless aspirated, and we've also got what kind of a nasal? Retroflex. So we've got to aspirate the pa and make mu curl our tongue. So pa nu, pa nu. Good. Murmured, breathy again, Cindy. And then also a, a retroflex nasal. Ba nu, ba nu. All right. Implosive, that may be the one you're still working on. And ba ni. Mm, mm, bunny. 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 All right. Next is laryngealized from Hausa. 
and that's bata, bata, bata. Next is ejective, also from hausa, kara, kara. All right. He said from one to seven, we've covered in six, and we should know all these. Let's continue in the paragraph. The only comment on the first seven sounds that it is necessary to add here, where they are all listed together, is that no language distinguishes between five and implosive b, and six a, la a, a laryngealized creaky voice b. All right, so that's important to remember. It sounds sort of like a test question. I'm not sure it will turn out, but it might. I was just reading in my students' comments this morning. Remember, I asked you the question about how to, how to. Um, promote better pronunciation, of English pronunciation in Taiwan, and problems with students being kind of passive and not giving feedback in class. I've been reading comments from the other class, and they said that um, um, one thing is that students are afraid of du, that they'll slow the class down if they make too, too many comments. Have you ever thought that? Has that ever been a reason why you didn't say something in class? Because you're afraid, uh-huh. Um, um, there was another reason I brought that up. Make sure you uh, know all the terms. And I'll, I'll think of what I want, what else I want to say about it later. But in any case, um, implosive, laryngealized. Ah, laryngealized. I didn't know if it was going to turn. Oh, now I remember. I didn't know if it was going to turn up in a test or not, but it sounds like a test question. Another thing that another student emphasized was. Some students, they say, I'm only going to prepare for what's going to be in the test. They said that one reason students don't ask anything in class, they don't read ko wai shu. They just decide the path of least resistance to the greatest success in terms of what they think is being required of them is just study only what's going to be tested on. Now, maybe some of you have that to some degree. Of course, I'm sure you know, a lot of you got into Tai Da, you have a lot of outside interests. But this student, I thought, made a pretty perceptive comment. He said, a lot of people, they just decide, I'm not going to do anything except for what is needed for the test. And then they do well in the test, and they don't do anything else. So if they get challenged on something else, are they going to be ready? No, they're only ready for the test. And the test is on the things the teacher said the test is going to be on. So <clears throat> that came to my mind as I was talking about this sounds like a test question. But it's good to know anyway that. Languages may have one sound or the other, or they may have both in free variation or as allophones, as conditioned allophones. But there's no language in which both implosives and laryngealized sounds, what? Contrast with each other. So there's no language that has one set of implosives, one set of laryngealized consonants, and that they form different words with different meanings. Okay? So one language may have only one. One language may have only the other one. One main language may have both, but they never exist in contrast as far as we know. Next paragraph. Certain languages have the one sound and others oh, the sorry, other. we're still on this paragraph. I jumped ahead. Go ahead. Read. In a few languages, both sounds occur as allophones or as free variations mm -hmm. of variation. Variants. Variants. Oh, Not sorry. Bad. Variants. Variants. Mm -hmm or as free variants of, sen of, of the same phoneme. <laughs> Sorry. They have not been found in contrast with each other. All right. So that's what I said. I jumped ahead. OK, let's go on. Stops with nasal release. Uh, release. The eighth possibility listed in Table 7.5. Five. Five. Mm -hmm. Were discussed in relation to English in Chapter 3. Nasal plosion occurs in English at the end, at the ends of words such as hidden and sudden. All right, but you didn't read it with nasal plosion. It's perfectly perfectly correct the way you said it. It's correct, but that's not nasal plosion. It's hidden, 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 hidden. This part the letter should be removed. Hidden, sudden, sudden. Sud is a sud. It's a sudden. This part should not be. Sudden. Sudden. Hidden. Sudden. 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 If you didn't learn these last semester, put it on your list of things to work on. Hidden, sudden. Don't 
break off the voicing in the middle. It's not hidden. That's, that's voiceless. Hidden. The voicing doesn't stop. And he's using this as an introduction to the next example, number eight, which is in Russian. In English, they occur at the end of a word. So hidden, D plus a nasal release for the end. Hidden, sudden. But, go ahead. Um, in some languages, how, however, 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 it can, it can occur at the beginning of a at word. What? At the beginning. 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 Ning. Beginning. Good, yeah. Beginning of Good. a word. Good. Try to say the Russian word for bottom. 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 Not bottom, that's more British. Bottom. Bottom. Mm -hmm. Which is. The Just read them in a row. No. 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 Make a D. Don't put your tongue down. Keep the voicing going. Just like hid. No. No. Mm hmm. Okay. So that is called a nasal release of a consonant, and they are homorganic which means they are produced at the same place, not sem, same place of articulation. So D with a nasal release, it's a kind of nasal plosion. No, no. Just like hidden in English, except it's at the beginning of the word. Good, next. The next possibility listed in table 6.5, hmm? table 7.5, is the pre Pre-nasalized. Pre-nasalized. Stop. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Which, which is in some senses, some senses, the reverse of a nasally released stop. In a pre-nasalized stop, the oral clo oral closure, in this case, an alveolar clo gesture, is formed first, while the soft palate is lowered. Let's stop right there. Let's stop on time. This is a new topic. It's not difficult. It's kind of fun. I will just mention that these sounds are extremely common in Bantu languages of Africa. And the one that I see most often these days is because I'm interested in an African thumb piano. It's, a, it's an African instrument called the imbira. So it's M-B-I-R-A. And this is just really common. It's pre-nasalized stops in African languages, especially Bantu, as far as I know. Mbira. Everyone? Mbira. Mbira. It's a really nice, it's a really nice sound. Okay, we'll stop there. And it was Vivian was reading, no, Sylvia was reading. <clears throat> and you start there next time. Okay. Um, what's coming up on Wednesday? We don't have class on Wednesday, that's right. Right? <laughs> so we're going to do vowels and consonants on Monday. And then we'll do the next chapter on the following Wednesday. So make sure that you do both chapters. That will be due <clears throat> the Wednesday that will be a week from, tomorrow, from the day after tomorrow. So vowels and consonants, you need two chapters for Wednesday of next week. Uh, what else? Yeah. Um, if you want to, it's always good to start writing them early. That's a nice suggestion. We're getting really close. Um, we probably will finish this in one more class or at most two. So we don't have class on Wednesday. We'll finish probably on Monday, possibly on Wednesday. So yes, that's a wonderful idea, Yumi. Uh, they're not that long. They're really not difficult. Um, the main thing, the longer part is the performance exercises. Work on those, practice those. Because we have some new consonants, some exotic consonants to work on. I have to work on a couple myself. Mm, yeah, start on the exercises. That's a great idea. And maybe we can finish on Monday. Good. So for Monday, we'll probably have the dictation then as well on Monday. Uh, one chapter of vowels and consonants. Actually, if we have all that, we may not finish the chapter. We'll probably finish on Wednesday. Okay, I think that sorts things out. And we'll see you next Monday. <laughs>